Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Dr. Princess Fumi Hancock. People know me as your global vision midwife. Others call me your trauma care life maestro. I'm a board certified psychiatric mental, mental health doctor of nurse practice out here in, uh, in Arizona. And of course, uh, I'm a best-selling author, and people know me also as the princess of Suburbia because I'm an African princess that's living in diaspora. So thank you again for joining me today. So I wanted to talk to you about something that's very dear to my heart, and this is mood disorder, right? With the advent of the pandemic and the advent of social injustice and the advent of all this racial stuff going on around us, right? Many people are exhibiting mood disorders. So today I want to talk a little bit about mood disorder, can we? So what is a mood disorder? Mood disorder is referred to as an affective disorder. What do I mean by that? It is a condition that severely impacts mood, the way you feel, right? The way you act. Mm -hmm. And it's related functions. Mood disorder is a broad term. I want you to hear this. Mood disorder is a broad term that's used to include all of the different types of depressive and bipolar disorder. Now, I know that's a word that we don't like to hear, but you're going to hear it today, right? So we talk about depressive and we talk about bipolar disorders, both of which affect our mood. If you have symptoms of a mood disorder, your moods may range from, get this, extremely low, which is depressed, to extremely high, irritable, agitated, which we call manic mania. So what are the symptoms? What are the symptoms to look out for when we're talking about mood disorder? Here we go. Mood disorder can lead to difficulty in keeping up with your daily task and demands. So if you find yourself not wanting to get out of bed, if you find yourself, right, looking at some things that used to bring joy to you and all of a sudden you're not interested in it. If you find yourself having problems, falling asleep or staying asleep. If you find yourself extremely agitated, perhaps it's time to go for help. So mood disorders, right? Like I said before, loss of interest in activities that once brought you joy. Bam. Eating more or eating less. Bam. Sleeping more or sleeping less. Bam. Fatigue, which is tiredness. Crying excessively. Worrying excessively. Anxiety. Feeling flat. Having absolutely no energy to do nothing. Feeling isolated, sad, hopeless, worthless. Are you having difficulty concentrating? Do you have problems making decisions? Do you have feelings of guilt? Are you irritable? Do you have thoughts? Right. Here's the thing. When I ask people about this, they're like, oh, no, Dr. Hancock. Well, let me ask again. Do you have thoughts of dying? Do you have thoughts of suicide? Now, when I say thoughts and ideation of suicide, I'm not saying you want to complete it. How many of you know that there are times you have that kind of feeling like, I wonder how life would be if I was not here? I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if, right? You have those thoughts, but then you do not complete it, all right? With mood disorders, these symptoms are ongoing and eventually start to affect daily life, right? They start to affect your daily life in an absolutely negative way. They're not the sporadic thoughts that you usually have, and they're not the feelings that everyone has on occasion. Because how many of you know that nobody's perfect, right? So what is the cause? What is the cause? Let's talk about the cause of mood disorder. No one knows the exact causes of mood disorder. But a variety of factors seem to contribute to them, and they tend to run in families. Chemical imbalances in the brain are the most likely cause of this. 
stressful life events like death in the family, divorce in the family, or trauma in the family can also trigger stress. It can trigger depression, especially if someone has already had it before or there's a genetic component to it. So how are they treated? I'm glad you asked. Mood disorders can often be treated with success. Treatment may include antidepressants. I know, I know, I know some of you do not want that. Let me tell you this. I've seen people that have literally gone to counseling for years only to come back to me to say, you know what? I'll try that medication. Don't get me wrong. I believe in the power of the two. Being able to marry psychotherapy with med management, I mean, that is what, what it's all about. All right, so don't get me wrong when I'm talking about psychotherapy because it has its place too, all right? So how do you treat it? Antidepressants. If you have persistent depression, then perhaps we might actually introduce some antipsychotics too, right? Mood stabilizing, mood stabilizing like lamotrigine, especially when combined with psychotherapy, just like I said before, it is shown to work very well and effectively as treatment of depression. Psychotherapy, most often used is cognitive behavioral therapy, which is taking the irrational thinking and turning it into rational thinking. The therapy is focused on changing the person's distorted views of himself or herself and the environment around which they are. It also helps to improve interpersonal relationship skills and identify stressors, in the environment and how to avoid them. We, of course, you also have another type of therapy called the family therapy where families come together. They play a vital supportive role in any treatment plan. So when do you see someone like me? Okay, glad you asked. Mood disorders should be properly evaluated. They should be properly treated by underscore a underscore mental health professional, such as a psychiatric provider like myself. Now, I know that oftentimes I've seen patients that would go to a physician. That is a good start if that's the first person that you could see. But you also have to understand that at some point, they will point you to, this, to a psychiatrist. So why not just go to a psychiatric provider? like myself, right? And just avoid delaying the inevitable. So what do you do? You visit somebody like myself. If any of the symptoms above have been interfering with your life, all the symptoms that we talked about, about particularly if you're having suicidal thoughts, then you should seek help immediately. Talk to a healthcare professional if you feel like your emotions are interfering with your work, your school, your relationship, your social activities, or other parts of your life. Have trouble with drinking or drugs? Well, it's time to pick up that phone and call. Have suicidal thoughts or behaviors? Seek emergency treatment immediately. And you could start at the ER. Your mood disorder is unlikely to simply go away because you say so. Let me say that again. Your mood disorder is very unlikely to simply go away because, just because it's you. Or it may even get worse over time if you do not pay attention to it. So, seek professional help before your mood disorder becomes severe. It may be easier to treat earlier on. So I hope I've been able to provide you with details on mood disorder, how you can get mood disorder, and how to treat it. Until next time, 
be inspired, be motivated, be of sentimental value. You understand that you are the hero in your own life story. Do not allow anybody to rewrite your story. Until next time, it's bye for now.